But the fact is that also then leads to say, what is the point of having bright LEDs then? You know what I'm saying? Like, where is it being used? Stop the FOMO. Do you have a fear of missing out on the best flagship mini LED TV of this year? We're talking about the best bright TV money can buy, priced at $3,300 at launch. It is designed to take on Samsung's other flagship TV, the S95C, also $3,300. And how about an apples to apples comparison versus last year's top Samsung Mini LED, the QN90B and the 95B, and against my favorite Mini LED TV last year, the editor's choice, Hisense U8H. And after spending some time with all these TVs, we now have a list of the five most important things you need to know about the Neo QLED QN95C to see if it fits your use case. But first, let me introduce today's sponsor, WhoKeys. Yep, you just finished your big old PC Windows build. You have the best of the best. And sadly, you have less than $20 to your name. WhoKeys to the rescue. Use my code SF20 and immediate discount. Let's quickly go through the activation process after you've purchased Windows 10 on WhoKeys. Go to your WhoKeys account and select My Purchased Orders. See your order? To the far right, click on the button that says View Keys Codes to see the Windows CD code. At the bottom of this order where it says Code Card, to the right is the product key you need to activate Windows. So copy this long number, then go to the Windows menu and click on Settings. In the Settings menu at the bottom, select Update and Security. Select Activation, then select Change Product Key, paste what you copied from WhoKeys, click Next, click Activate, and you're done. You can download the Windows 10 Pro key, and you're up and running. But that's not all, folks. WhoKeys has keys for games, too. Steam, Origin, you play, you name it, you got it. Check out their sites. There are discounts for all sorts of stuff. And most importantly, you want to be productive? What about Office Suite? Yep, you can download a copy of Office Professional with my code SF20 at checkout and bam. Now, before we jump into the list of the five things you need to know about the Q95C, let's make sure you understand how these are very different TVs, the Q95C and the S95C two completely different technologies designed with different goals in mind. The Q95C is an LCD based TV with mini LED, very bright. Actually, it's designed to be the brightest TV you can buy without the risk of burn-in or significantly lower risk of burn-in. Obviously, if you put it on an airport, CNN, 24 seven, super bright mode, eventually it'll probably get burn-in. But for most people, not a risk. The S95C on the other hand, not quite as bright, but infinite contrast. It has its benefits and that risk of burn-in, although to me it's minimal, it's still there. Then the question is, well, when you're watching most content, how do they really compare? Now let's get into the five things you need to know about the QN95C before you buy it to see if it fits your use case. First, it is the most full-featured, highly spec TV ever from Samsung. 144 Hz native refresh rate for PC gamers. Speaking of gamers, four HDMI 2.1 ports with full bandwidth, 48 gigabit per second gaming features, and most importantly, 1,344 dimming zones. Finally, we're getting flagship number of dimming zones, and it shows. On an LCD TV, the more dimming zones, the better. With almost twice as many dimming zones, what are you getting? You're getting closer to OLED performance. We're talking OLED. What is it so strong in? Infinite contrast, no blooming. With 1344 dimming zones, well, <laughs> it gets pretty close. And well, here's a great comparison, right? With 1344 dimming zones, the QN95C gets so close to the 77-inch S95, and it leaves the U8H behind. Now, last year's U8H actually outperformed both the QN90B and the 900B, the 8K, with over a thousand dimming zones, right? Well, this year, Samsung with the 95C has now surpassed my editor's choice U8H, which takes us to number two. It is better than OLED, specifically the S95C, in a bright specular highlight against a bright scene. OLED does not like this, right? In a bright scene with a bright specular highlight, the load balancing issues, the ABL, the OLED cannot get as bright. Well, the QN95C 
does. Knocks that out of the ballpark. In the Mad Max, as well as in Matrix Resurrections, the scenes where the entire scene is super bright, Q95C does it slightly better than the OLED, but that's what you want, right? You're paying for that extra APL in a bright room. Can it pop? And we're talking filmmaker mode. I'm not putting it in crazy vivid or dynamic mode. And the Q95C, gets closer to creator's intent in those sources that require high APL with a bright specular highlight. Pan is another such scene. In that one scene, boom. And that's what you're paying for, right? If you're in a moderately lit or bright room and you want the HDR impact, OLED gets close. Well, the S95C OLED gets close. The G3 also gets close, but the Q95C is just a bit more impactful. Number three, it has an excellent image processor, better than the U8H. Specifically in the scenes where you have slightly lower bit rate, the U8H struggles with macro blocking. The Q95C nails it. I really like the image processor on the Q95C. Number four, and this may be the most important point on the list, it comes in 85 inch size. So you're asking me basically, am I only choosing mini LED because they're larger and you would say, I would say yes. So the S95C, you love it, you want it. It only comes in a 77 inch. If you're okay with the few drawbacks we talked about, specular highlights, not quite as high, but it comes in 85 inch, the Q95C is the only game in town. Yes, you can go with the 85 inch G3, but then that does not have MLA and it will not get as bright in a bright room compared to the Q95C. And lastly, number five is specular highlights in the dark scenes. Specifically, this one from The Greatest Showman, the hat scene, the sparkly diamonds in her hat. As you can see, it sparkles way more on the S95C, not as much on the Q95C. So if this is important to you, you will have to go with an OLED TV, either the S95C, the S90C, or the LG G3 and C3, or G2 and C2. They will all do this scene a little bit better than the Q95C. So here are my recommendations. Get the Q95C if one, two, three and four are important to you. No other TV comes close in those four respects. And specifically, number four is the 85 inch. But if you're okay without the 85 inch, get the S95C because it beats the Q95C in these three aspects. The only reason to get that QN95C over the S95C with these three in mind is if you're in a super bright room where really the brightness of the room neutralizes that infinite contrast and you need that APL, Q95C sports watching nails it. But speaking of brightness in a bright room, if that's what you really need, you might just consider the U8H, although it lacks the sophistication and image processing of the QN95C and it lacks the gaming features of the QN95C, it's a rock solid TV that's super bright for $900. And what about Dolby Vision? I didn't talk about it because personally, I don't think it's a big deal for these flagship TVs, but if you do want Dolby Vision in your flagship mini LED TV, you have these options. The Sony X95L, but it only comes in 85 inch size. LG does not have a flagship mini LED TV this year. Sharp Aquos, the new one comes in a 65, 70 and 75 inch also with close to a thousand dimming zones, possibly more. The Hisense U8K has Dolby Vision, although less dimming zones, and the TCL QM8 also comes in the 65, 75, and 85 inch with thousands of dimming zones. And speaking of reviews of these other amazing mini LED TVs, check here and here. And for the latest news and updates, check over here. Until next time, stop the FOMO.